right, good morning, everybody. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, I thought uh, we, as a coaching staff and as players, we navigated uh, our bye week really well. Um, you know, I, as I said last week, a bye week can be self-serving in a number of different ways for what your program needs, what your individual players need, some things that we look at schematically on defense. Um, you know, you want to be able to self-scout <clears throat> what you're giving away, what you're doing well, what you need to get corrected moving forward. Uh, and I thought we had a really productive week in that regard. Some younger players that took steps in the right direction, we were able to focus and pinpoint on some things fundamentally that we've got to continue to work on and, uh, <clears throat> and execute at a higher level. Uh, and, uh, and so that certainly uh, was a good week and, and got a whole lot done from, from that perspective. Uh, looking at uh, uh, Georgia, um, this is uh, uh, obviously a, a team that has had tremendous success uh, over the last few years. You know, you look at their program, Coach Smart and his staff are going into their ninth season together. You know, we're in our first season together. Uh, you think about, you know, all the things that they have built within that program, and they've really uh, done a great job um, in terms of building a culture, um, you know, recruiting base. Uh, you know, developing great players within their program, and it's showed up on the field. Uh, and so we'll certainly have our work cut out for us uh, from that standpoint. I think offensively, uh, Mike Bobo has had a really tremendous career, um, has done a, a great job uh, wherever he has been. Um, I think he has been very efficient uh, with his offense um, here, you know, the last couple of years. I think he's done a, a really good job of attacking people. Um, you know, he's aggressive, um, takes shots at different parts, keeps you guessing, keeps you off kilter, uh, and then certainly is committed to being able to run the football as well. I think their quarterback, Carson Beck, is as good as it comes in college football right now. Um, incredibly efficient with his decision making, um, does not take many sacks. Um, rarely turns the ball over, takes care of the football, uh, and, and I think he does a, a really tremendous job in his intermediate throwing game um, and, uh, and has, has great accuracy in those things. Really quick release, great decision maker. Uh, just so impressed by him the more I watch. And, you know, I've probably watched, I don't know, every game in the last couple of years here. So um, I think they're running backs. Uh, they've got a number of guys that um, – uh, that are very physical runners, very detailed in their footwork. Um, you know, they're patient. They set blocks up, um, and uh, and certainly can can you know create explosive plays in their run game at any given moment. I think they're committed to running the football, um, and you know you've got to do a great job of being consistent in the fundamentals and schematically uh, knocking out the run down in and down out. Obviously, as an offensive line, they're big, they're physical. Um, you know, they've been around. Uh, for a bit, and then you've got some some pretty impressive offensive skill on the outside as well. So it'll be a great matchup. We'll have our work cut out for us uh, schematically and logistically and all that, but I think everybody's got their work cut out for them. I'm not sure Greg Byrne and our administration may have their uh, work cut out for them more than anybody this week. So everybody's got a tough job in this building. It's time to get to work and show up on Saturday. Yeah, it's, I mean, any game is important to generate pressure, but how key is it just with all the weapons and things they have offensively and with what Carson Beck can do for you guys to get after him and create pressure? Well, I think, um, I think you know, as an offense, they do a really good job of minimizing the risk for their quarterback. I mean, they get the ball out of their hand. They try to establish the run. They get the ball in the perimeter early. They will take shots, and they'll take shots early in the game, but uh, – you know, you've got to find that fine balance of playing good, sound coverage and also not making the quarterback feel like he can just sit in the pocket and pick you apart. Long developing plays in the passing game, right? I think they do a really good job uh, if he has time, right, and in, in, in hitting most of those things because he's incredibly accurate um, at different portions in the field, the short game, the intermediate game, and then certainly he can make the long throws downfield. I think this is this, this guy's a complete quarterback. I mean, he is... He's really as, as good as I've seen the last couple of years here. So um, I think uh, uh, for us, we certainly have to be mindful of making him uncomfortable. Um, but you want to make sure that you are um, not sacrificing things in, 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 from a coverage perspective in order to get that done. Stay on the right side of the target. Yeah, Coach, you talked about how you've known Christian Robinson for a long time. Just what makes him a good coach at such a young age? Yeah. You know, uh, see, Rob, I've, I've – uh, 
we were fortunate enough to uh, uh, to both coach under my dad. Um, I thought, you know, my dad always did a really great job of developing young coaches underneath him. He tre treated us all like position coaches. You know, during his time at Ole Miss, I mean, he had uh, he had myself, um, Christian, who's had a really tremendous career since he's left. Um, uh, uh, Ole Miss, and then um, Demarcus Covington is the defensive coordinator for the New England Patriots, and then you've got um, Trey Scott, who's the D-line coach at Georgia. So those were the four GAs that my dad had uh, over those uh, over those uh, those couple of years there, and and uh, really I think you know Christian uh, earned enough respect out of uh, from from my dad and the rest of the defensive staff to his second year get to coach the inside linebackers and really spend a lot of time with those guys on the field and in the meeting room. And I think that's a credit to who he is, the character that he has, the the work ethic, um, and uh, and he's also a very smart ball coach that's got a bright future. Go left side to Chase. Uh, when you looked at the Georgia-Kentucky video, what were some of the things Kentucky did well to hold Georgia to 13 points? Well, I thought I thought uh, Kentucky played really hard. They played at a fever pitch. They were physical. They played with great effort and finish. Um, I think they've got some guys up front that do a really good job uh, in the in the run game uh, from a D line standpoint. Um, and I thought they, you know, they they played the game defensively the way it's supposed to be played. Uh, they were attacking on on defense. Uh, they didn't do too much. I think that's something you got to be mindful of against these guys. They give you a lot of window dressing and eye candy, whatever you want to call it. A lot of formations, a lot of shifts, a lot of pictures, and you've got to be able to fundamentally line up and execute, and yet at the same time uh, do enough to be able to create negative plays and takeaways. And so there's a fine balance there, but I thought Kentucky did a really nice job of that. You mentioned uh, players taking steps forward in the bye week. How did Yonsei Pierre take a step forward? Yeah, I thought um, Yonsei continues to have an urgency when he when he comes out to practice um, to to better himself and and thus this football team. Um, you know, it's it's really rewarding and fun as a coach to see a young man mature um, right right in front of you. Uh, and I think he is taking steps uh, from a fundamental standpoint, understanding what we do within our scheme um, to maximize his opportunities when he's getting out on the field. And he's just becoming a more consistent football player across the board. Which not a lot of teams have had success with Georgia over the past few years. But this Alabama team has last year as most recent. Do you rely on those guys, Malachi, Deontay, maybe even Coach Saban, what you've picked his brain on him? What's the secret against Georgia? Well, I think. Um, I think certainly the experience of our players being in, in big moments. They've played in the SEC. They've had success in the SEC. They've had success against Georgia. Um, you know, certainly you want to rely on the experience of those players. There's a lot of young players on our defense that do, don't have those experiences, right? And we talk about experience being finite, but also as best you can, you want these younger players to be able to draw upon the experience and confidence that comes from you know, guys like Malachi and Deontay and a, a number of our defensive line, right, that has, you know, played in, in SEC matchups and, and particularly against Georgia. And so those are things that we're going to rely on, and, and hopefully uh, our experience shows up in the right way Saturday night. Go to Colin on the front side, uh, left side. Hey, Kane. Obviously, this is a defense you've said that, you know, you want to have a reputation of takeaways, swarm defense. In the game. This is a Georgia offense that doesn't really, you know, have a lot of opportunities for takeaways. And I'm curious for a defense that kind of takes momentum through takeaways and those opportunities, how do you encourage your guys to kind of force those opportunities for an offense that really doesn't give them all that money? Yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think the um, the focus changes for us in terms of we uh, having an opportunity and a mind a mindset to create uh, takeaway opportunities. You know, we created 13 last week against Wisconsin. We got the ball twice, but we had other opportunities to get the ball, whether it was a sack, you know, cause fumble, a, a pass breakup, you know, tip balls or pick balls. We say those things, right, in terms of being able to get our hands on the football. And that's certainly not going to be any different um, against these guys. It will be a challenge, right? It's, you know, one of those uh, 
what do they call it, an unstoppable force against an immovable object, right? You know, we're trying to create a lot of takeaways. It's who we are. It's what our identity is. And they do a really good job of taking care of the football. And we've got to, you know, we've got to do our best to be able to be plus one in, in the turnover margin on Saturday night. I think that's going to be a huge piece of the game is who can take care of the football and who can take the football away. I think it'll be a huge indicator in, in, in the outcome of the game. You mentioned Georgia's running backs. It's pretty much a new look room compared to last year. What have you observed from how they're using them in the run in the past compared to last year, or maybe the year before? You know, I think schematically, I don't see um, a, a lot of difference. There's some nuances. There's some little things that you see from an offense, you know, things that they worked in the off season, things that they liked, things that they wanted to add a little bit, but those are more tweaks. I think this is a very well-established offensive system. I think they believe in what they do and they have had success in what they do. Uh, but these backs are really hungry. I mean, they run really hard. They're physical. Um, they're, you know, they cre can create yards after contact. Uh, and then when they get in space, you you've got a couple of guys that can really take you know, take advantage of, of uh, explosive plays in the run game. And so, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us because I think, you know, it's not just one guy, it's a number of guys that can create explosive things for them in the run game. You guys are allowing almost a full yard less than anyone else per attempt uh, through the air. Uh, just is that something that you kind of first saw at the beginning of the season? Is this passing defense a little bit ahead of schedule? And then just what has allowed you to kind of be able to have that success? Well, I think, um, you know, I think when you look at, at what we want to try to do, the game nowadays, an extension of the run game is teams being able to take easy access throws on the perimeter. And at times we want to be mindful of denying those easy access throws and forcing people to throw into tight windows and tight coverage. And I think there's a number of ways to do that. That doesn't just always mean man coverage. It means anticipating things in zone coverage and vision coverage. Um, and we're doing a, a, a fairly good job right now of, of challenging routes, challenging receivers, um, not giving lateral space away, but also defending the vertical space. Um, we've got to get better at those things, uh, but I think we've taken steps in the right direction uh, to be able to limit uh, some of those easy access windows in the throw game right now. All right, we got two questions. Hey, Kane, um, obviously two versus four are going to be a playoff atmosphere in the middle of the regular season. I mean, how much is a game like this part of the reason that you take this leap from, from South Alabama to taking the defensive coordinator job here at Alabama? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I've said this before, but you come to Alabama to compete against the best and to create uh, value, right, for uh, yourself as an individual, uh, as a player, um, and, and value for this team. Um, by executing uh, when it matters most, right? I tell our players this all the time. Um, the, the, the greatest players always step up in the biggest moments. And whether that be in a critical third down or, you know, critical SEC matchups or, uh, you know, red zone or taking the ball off of people, whatever it is, right? These are the opportunities um, that are given for, for players to be able to step up in the biggest moments. And as coaches, we're no different. We want to be able to compete against the best. There's things we do schematically, fundamentally, culturally, right, that you want to be able to get a group of young men to all pull the rope in the same direction and then show up on game day and see what that looks like on Saturdays. And so we're working our tails off right now to maximize our opportunity for success on Saturday as a coaching staff and as a group of players um, and, uh, and then let the chips fall where they may uh, in a couple of days here. All right, this is our last question real quick, Joe. Coach, you talk about misuse in the run game so far. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you assess the, the misfits over the last three weeks, would you assess them to mental errors, through physical deficiencies, lack of uh, experience in the system, or maybe something else? Yeah, I think, um, I think you can't point to any one specific thing. There's, there's a number of things as you're building a new defense and guys getting comfortable, particularly in the run fit. You know, um, from, a, from stopping the run, it's a, we're talking about a game of inches, right? Uh, hand placements techniques, um, alignments, you know, um, and then making sure that you have proper leverages across the board. And so there's little details that fundamentally we need to improve on to get ourselves better. Certainly from a schematic standpoint, I think some of the pressures that we're, that we're running, we have not been 
as efficient or effective enough to be able to knock out the run. Those are bullets that sometimes I'm going to use in the run game. And when I use those bullets, we need to be able to efficiently um, execute those things. And we have not done it to the level that I think we're capable of. Some of that is the growing pains in a new defense, but certainly we need to have an urgency to take steps forward across the board. And I think I think that we've maximized the bye week in doing that. And But those things got to show up as we navigate into SEC play. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Roll Tide.